Okay, in this tutorial we're going to discuss some of the advanced pitched roof tools and features that you can do with Prospect. In this custom example you can see that there are a few things going on with this roof. We've got gable ends and on this end we've got a gable but the sides are different in length. Uh, this side has come up so it's at a different pitching point. We have cutouts. We also have a Dutch gable end. We have another gable end that's been raised uh, above the pitching point for the rest of the roof. And importantly, both sides share a common ridge. So let's showcase how you can do this using the Plusbeck roof editing tools. As you can see, I've already created one to the side and everything in here has been done using the Plusbeck pitch roof tools and editing tools and we think they're gonna blow your mind. Up until now, a lot of people have been trying to do these things manually and by manual we mean breaking in using the SketchUp tools and trying to reconfigure and push and it can become very messy even though at times uh, that's the advantage of Plusbeck being inside of SketchUp is that if you get to a point you can always achieve a result. But obviously if you can keep things parametric and within the tools you'll be able to do them smarter and faster. So let's show you how you do this. So obviously when you are generating a pitched roof you can actually do it from the walls if they all form a loop and that will create a face that you can use. You can also manipulate that face by grabbing the lines, moving them, etc. And if your walls don't create a loop then you're going to use the SketchUp line tool, rectangle tool, etc. and you can create the face. Now I'm not doing it over the walls, I'm just going to simplify this by uh, doing the face completely by itself. So once you have your face you can click on it and then you can click on the roof tool and on the second icon, uh, you're going to press that, and that is the pitching tools, or the hip roof tool. Now in here, you can go through and you can select what you want. You can choose pitch ratio, degrees, etc. Uh, you can nominate your materials and a whole bunch of other things. But I'm just going to press submit. We're not going to get too caught in, up in detail here. And as you can see, Plusbeck will generate uh, all of these things uh, based on the parameters that you put in. But we know that now we need to reconfigure it so we can change the, the way that this looks. We don't want it to be just a pure um, hip. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we can start to put in our gable ends. And you can really start anywhere. So I am actually going to start on this one. And again, depending if you are using degrees or ratio, I'm using metric. If you are using uh, imperial, then you'll be typing feet and inches. But I'm going straight up, up and down for this gable, so that's a 90 degree. If it's a pitch ratio, it's one is to zero. And then you can go through and you can put uh, an overhang, whatever you want, press submit. And the tool stays open, so now you can just continuously move around and do all of your other gable ends. So I'm gonna do this one next. Again, we just press submit, I'm just gonna keep everything the same. Wait for that one to load. We're then gonna do this one, because it is a gable also. Wait for that one to load and press submit. Okay, we're getting there. This tool is great because as you can see, you can just move on to the next part that relates. And I know that we need to turn this into a single ridge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this one. And again, I'm going to press submit. However, we don't want it to have an overhang here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that to zero. So there's no eave on that side, press submit. And then I can click on this one. Now don't forget, Plusbeck does its best to remember your last input, so just be aware of that. So as you can see, the gable overhang is now zero. Press submit. Okay, we're making progress. Now, we're definitely a long way there. Obviously we can see that we're gonna to have to raise this part here to be at the same ridge level. And obviously we're gonna to have to put the Dutch gable in. And we're also now gonna to have to raise uh, the pitching points here so that they, they appear higher. So let's show you how to do that. What I normally recommend is you turn off the 21 capping because it can get in the way. And now you want to use a tape measure tool, so T on your keyboard. Uh, and if you get on the blue axis, you should be able to measure the distance to the top of this sheeting here. And again, I'm using metric, but ignore my units of measurement. So that's 1772. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into, again, the edit roof pitch add gable. And I'm going to select this side. Now this time, it's important that what I actually do is I tick this reverse Dutch gable jerkin head and I type in the distance there. So that was 1772 millimeters. 
and I press submit. Now, as you can see, it's raised it to that ridge. Now I need to do it onto the other side. However, it's not going to be the same measurement. Again, I need to go into the tape measure tool and I need to click on the pitching point to the underside or to the sheeting, and that's 978. So again, I'm going to right click, roof, get into that tool, select this side, and then I'm going to type in 978. And I'm going to make sure that obviously my reverse Dutch gable with jerkin head has been ticked. Now the reason this works and doesn't produce that shape is because we've already turned it into a gable. And then when you go back and you say, now I also want to make the side a Dutch gable or jerkin head, what it's doing is it's just simply raising it. It's changing the pitching point. So again, I press submit. And now we're going to see that this will rise. And if I draw a line now across my sheeting, and I hold down on the red axis, you can see that it's perfectly aligned. So that's correct. So this is this side done. I now want to do the same thing on this side. And I could take measurements. Again, if I'm designing, I'll just do it by eye. So I can right click roof, get back into this. I'm going to select on this hand side, this side here. And then now I'm going to, again, make sure that my reverse Dutch gable jerkin head has been ticked. And I can type in a distance. I might want to raise it a meter, for example. Press submit. Wait for that to come up and you can see it's now been raised a meter from the pitching point. So I'm a long way there now. So I've got this middle piece I now need to do and I have the uh, Dutch gable end. So let's move on to the middle piece. Okay, so to change this ridge line to match this one, again, I just need to take another measurement. So in my tape measure tool, I can left click from here, go up to the ridge that I want to align it to, and that's 1699. And then again, I'm right clicking, roof, go into the add gable, select this middle piece. And then again, you want to make sure that uh, your reverse Dutch gable is on there and you want to type in the measurement. Press submit. Wait for that to load. Now, as you can see, if I click out, you can see that my ridge has been aligned correctly and my cutout is working. Cool, let's now get into the Dutch gable and we're pretty much done. So with the Dutch gable, you want to kind of figure it out from your fascia typically. So if you know an exact measurement and you can use the tape measure tool for that. So you might know that you want it you know, to be there. For example, and you could even type it in if you knew it. So maybe it's that. And then now when you right click and go into your roof, you'll see that the third one gives you the Dutch gable option. And now I can simply select the line, just press OK here. And again, I want it to be 90 degrees or one is to zero if you're using ratio. And again, you can go through and you can change the different connections, so overhang types, etc. Uh, I'm just going to press submit. Wait for that to load. Okay, I now have my Dutch gable end. That's looking really good. I can delete my guide. And now I, I really have one step that I have to do now, and that's this little cutout on the side. So I'm going to right click, go into the roof, and I'm going to go and select Edit Roof Pitch, Add Gable. I'm going to select this side here. This will load the dialog again. Now this time I don't want to change anything, so I'm going to get rid of my reverse Dutch gable. I don't need that. Uh, and I am going to put a zero overhang for the eave. And importantly, it's at 90. So that's all I need. So now I just press submit. Wait for that to load. And now you can see that I've got my cutout. Finally, depending on the shapes, you might be missing some fascia and you might want to do some more infills, etc. And for the fascia and the gutter, for example, I'll turn my capping back on to start. Uh, but you can go into the roof tool and you'll notice that there is a capping flashing tool. And this gives you the ability to go through and add your fascia. Now you can go through, you can select for example, the fascia, I'll just keep it like this at this color, press submit, but essentially you can now just go in and making sure that you're just selecting your uh, sheeting, you can go through and put in your fascia, however you need it to be, like so, go around, you can further connect that, etc. Uh, and then obviously if you need to put more capping or gutter in, you can do that using that tool also. And if you want to put infill in, you can do it using either the wall tool or you could even go onto the wall surface tool, uh, which is here, and you can put in your extra elements that you need if they're not or if they haven't been controlled by the walls, that is.